is paper number 20581 question numbers 1 to 5 now these five questions are based on eight people live on eight different floors of a building isn't it eight persons k l m n o p q n r stays live on eight different floors of a building but not nested in the same order now this floor arrangement in this floor arrangement first write down the floors at the center 87654543 to n1 now in this one eight people and the lower most floor of the building is number 1 number 1 and the one above that is number 2 and so on till the top most floor is number 8 and p lives on an even number floor here only the persons were given no other parameter has been added to this one isn't it now whenever the floor arrangement is given fix that floor at the center and represent the information like this by which we can able to represent two different possibilities at a single time isn't it then what is the first information here p lives on an even number floor as p lives on an even number floor but not on the top most floor and so what are the possibilities to this p now this p can be either on the second floor fourth floor or the sixth floor hence there are three possibilities out of these three possibilities let us start with the first possibility p and the next possibility p here isn't it and if these two possibilities were invalid then we will directly go for third one that is 6 now p lives on an even number floor but not on the top most floor only three people live between l and p as three people in live in between l and p now this is case 1 and this is case 2 now in this case one three people between l and p l must be on sixth floor and in the next one and in the second case l must be in the eighth floor isn't it only three people live between l and p r lives immediately below l r lives immediately below l now r lives immediately below l in case one r is living on fifth floor and in case two and r is living on seventh floor r lives immediately below l only two people between r and m two people between r and m now in the first case two people between r and m below r m is not possible because below r if m is here then m must be on the second floor which is not possible isn't it hence in the first case this m is above this r in between r and m there are exactly two persons then coming to the second case in this one now between r and m there must be exactly two persons as r is here above this r is not possible and below this r is also not possible because then m and p will be in the same place hence the second possibility whatever we have taken p at the fourth place is completely ruled out now we are left with one next one and k lives immediately above q as k lives immediately above q and k must be here this is the only possibility left over for these two persons to be adjacent to each other and k lives immediately above q there are as many people between q and r as there are between r and o q and r how many persons are there in between q and r there is exactly one person as in between q and r the number of persons in between q and r equals to the number of persons in between r and o now in between q and r there is exactly one person hence in between r and o also we should have exactly one person as r is on the fifth floor hence o must be on the seventh floor then who is the person left over here k l m n k l m n n is the person left over and this n must be on the first floor and this is how these eight persons are staying on eight different floors of a building clear enough then question number 1 who among the following lives on floor number 6 as tell me who among the following lives on floor number 6 l lives on floor number 6 that is choice 3 then in question number 2 as per the given arrangement four of the following five are alike that means four of the following is nothing but and no need to read the entire question four out of the following itself represents it is an odd man out question isn't it odd man out means that four must be in the same way and one does not follow that pattern now r and p what is the relation between r and p here between r and p between r and p how many persons are there in between r and p between r and p there are two persons between n and k n and k again there are two persons between q and l q and l how many persons are there there are exactly two persons in between q and l l and o l and o are adjacent to each other and between m and r there are exactly two persons except in choice 4 and in the remaining choices there are two persons between these two persons but whereas in choice 4 these two persons are adjacent to each other then question number 
if L and P interchange their places. L and P interchange their places means P is coming to this place and L will goes to this place. L and P interchange their places and so do K and M. K and M interchange their places means M is coming to the place of K and K is going to the place of M. K and M, then who will be between M and L as per the new arrangement? Between M and L, who is that person here? No, L is on the second floor and M is on the fourth floor. The person in between these two lives on the third floor and is none other than Q, choice two. Then question number four, who among the following live exactly between K and N? As tell me, exactly between K and N, K is on the fourth floor and N is on the first floor. And who are the persons lives in between K and N? P and Q, and P and Q that is given in choice one. Question number four, choice one. And fifth one, on which of the following floor numbers does O live? As O lives on the seventh floor, seven that is choice five is the answer. Now this is about question numbers one to five, floor arrangement, eight floors, eight different persons lives on eight different floors of a building. Done with this? Then question number six to 10. Now in this question number six to 10, now here, 12 people are seated in two parallel rows containing six people each. Now two row arrangement. Now in these two rows, there are 12 persons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. This is how these six persons were there, isn't it? Now, in this one, this two row arrangement, the first and foremost thing what we are supposed to do is, now which is row one, and who are the persons in that row one, and the persons in row one are facing towards which direction and those three should be identified and should be written clearly. And in row one, J, K, L, M, N, N, O are seated and all of them are facing south. Now south means, now this is row one and these persons are facing towards south. And who are the persons in row one? J, two, who are the persons in row one? And this is row two. Now in this row two, who are the persons in row two? Now in the second row, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. That means U, two, Z are the six persons seated in row one and these persons are facing towards north. Clear? Six persons towards south and six persons towards north. And in all of them are facing north. And therefore, in the given seating arrangement, each member seated in a row faces another member of the row. That means these two persons are opposite to each other. Then, M sits fourth to the left of J. As M is seated fourth to the left of J, now see here. As M sits fourth to the left of J, now this J and M are facing towards south. M sits fourth to the left of J means now M is to the left of J, hence this M should be towards our right hand side because these persons are facing towards south. As M sits fourth to the left of J, now let us check out the possibilities for this J and M. If J is in the first place, one, two, three, four, M will be here, this is one possibility. Then what is the second possibility here? One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and J at the second place, M will be here. Hence, in total, how many possibilities do we have? We have exactly two possibilities for this. M sits fourth to the left of J, and the one who facing J sits third to the left of Y. Now, the person who is facing J, that means this person is, is seated third to the left of whom? Third to the left of Y. As third to the left of Y, and this Y must be here, then only the person who is facing J sits third to the left of Y. Then, now this is the person facing J, and this person is seated third to the left of Y, and so Y must be at this place, one, two, and three. And the person who sits, the one facing J sits third to the left of Y, and only one person between Y and U. As only one person between Y and U, in the first case, we are having two different possibilities. You can be either here or you can be here. And in this case, we are having only one possibility, one person between Y and U. And U does not sit at any of the extreme ends. As U, can, U is not at any of the extreme ends, now in the first case, U at this place is ruled out. Now finally we are left with U at this place. Are you following or not? Then, and U does not sit at any of the extreme ends of the row, of the line. The one who is facing Z sits second to the right of K. Now who are the person, who are the person seated second to the right of K? Now this person is facing whom? That person is facing Z, isn't it? The person who is, who sits second to the right of Z is facing to the right of Z. The one facing Z sits second to the right of K. As sits second to the right of K, now whatever this one, this K is facing towards which direction? South. As K is facing towards south, second to the right of K is this person and this person is facing Z. Hence, these two persons are 
opposite to each other, isn't it? As these two positions are opposite to each other, then tell me whether k can be at this place or not. Now in the first case I am talking about. Now if k is here, second to the right of k will be this person and this person must be opposite to z which is not positive because that person will be opposite to y. And so k cannot be here and k cannot be here. Then tell me whether k can be at this place or not. If k is here, then second to the right of the person will be here and this person must face whom? Must face z which is not positive because u is already here. Hence k cannot be here as well, isn't it? Now k cannot be at this place, k cannot be at the second place, k cannot be here, k. Then k cannot be here as well. Why k cannot be here? Because there is no second person to this person, right hand side. Hence k must be here. If k is here, second to the right of means this k is facing towards south, is second to the left, right hand side will be towards our left hand side and this person must be z. Done with this one? The person who is fitted second to the right of k faces z. Next coming to this one, now tell me whether k can be at this place or not. If k is here, then what happens is the person who is second to the right of k, that means this person, this person must face z which is not possible because u is already at this place. Hence k cannot be here. Then, then tell me whether k can be here or not. Yes, if k is here, then the person facing, the person sits second to the right of k is j. Now the j is facing z that is possible, hence one possibility. And if k is here, then z can be here. And so how many possibilities are there here? There are two possibilities, isn't it? And the one facing z sits second to the right of k. And, and what is the other information here? Z does not sit at any of the extremes of the row. As z does not sit at any of the extremes of the row, z cannot be here. As z cannot be here, then z must be here. If z is here, then k will be here. Earlier we discussed about there are two possibilities for this k and z. But as now, only one possibility because z is not at any of the extremes of the row. Done with this one? Now we have finalized this k and z as well. And the next one, only two people between k and o. As only two people between k and o, here o must be at this place. Now in case one, o must be at this place. Only two people, case one. Why case one is ruler? The one facing z sits second to the right of k and at the same time z does not sit at any of the extreme ends of the row. Here z is at the extreme end of the row. This is only possibility. Hence case one is completely ruled out. Now we are left with only the second case. Now in this one, two people between k and o. As two people between k and o, o will be here. And the one who is facing k sits second to the left of x. Now the one who is facing k means this person is seated second to the left of x and x must be here. And the one who is facing k sits second to the left of x. V is not an immediate neighbor of z as v cannot be at this place and so v must be in between u and y. And L is not an immediate neighbor of m as L is not an immediate neighbor of m, L cannot be in between k and m and so L must be in between j and k. Then who is the person left over in row 1? J to O, J, K, L, M, N, O. And in the next one, U to Z, U, V, W is the person left over. And finally, we are left with this case. And what is ordered here? In row 1, O, J, L, K, N, M is ordered in which these six persons are seated. And in the second row, W, Z, U, V, Y, X. Yes, write down this one. <coughs> Then who among the following faces me? Yes, tell me who is facing me here. K is facing me, that is given in choice three. Then question number seven. Which of the following groups of people represent the people seated at the extreme ends of both the rows? Ex extreme ends, O, M, W, X, O, M, W, X, and it is given in choice two, M, O, X, W, choice two. Then question number eight. Now in this question number 8, which of the following is true regarding n? Where is n here, n is here. Now which among the following statements is definitely true regarding this n? And k sits second to the right of n. k is seated second to the right of n is false because k is to the immediate right of n. Hence first choice is ruled out. Second one, one person between n and j. One person between n and j is again false because there are two persons k and l between n and j. And second one is ruled out. And choice four. V is an immediate neighbor of the person who faces N. Who faces N? No, sir. Y is facing N and V is an immediate neighbor of Y. That is definitely true. Hence, V is an immediate neighbor of the person who faces N is true. Done? 
and it's question number four, question number eight choice four. Then coming to question number nine, which of the following statements is true with respect to the given information? Now second one, J faces Z. J faces Z is definitely true or not? Yes. And so choice two is definitely true, ninth one. Then question number 10, tenth one, who among the following sits second to the right of the person who faces L? Now tell me who is facing L, U is facing L, and who is seated second to the right of U? Y. Why that is choice five. Now this is about question number six to ten. Twelve persons seated in two different rows, six persons in one row, and six persons in the second row. Then question number eleven to fifteen. Now in this question number eleven to fifteen, these questions are based on input and output, isn't it? Now in this input and output, tell me how many elements are there in the given input? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. In total we have 12 elements and 12 elements and which is the final step here? Step 6 is the final step. 12 elements are there, there are 6 and the final step is in 6th step. That means there are 6 steps all together. 12 elements, 6 steps which implies that in each step we are exactly, we are exactly arranging two two elements, isn't it? <clears throat> then only six steps are possible. As we are arranging two elements in each of these steps, now first let us find out the logic behind this one. And in order to find out the logic in the given example, which two should be compared here? Input and the final output should be compared. And what is input here? Input is 23 kinetic amount, 64 nature, 71, 53, 58 opium, Verdict 96, elderly and 15 are the 12 elements given and step 6 is the final output. Then if you compare input and the final output step 6, then how these elements are arranged? First 71, 23, 15 are the 3 numbers arranged. What are these numbers? Odd numbers. Among the given 6 numbers in the input, all the odd numbers are arranged first in the descending order 71, 23, 15 and followed by what? Followed by 3 words. Three numbers, three words. And these three words, amount, elderly, and opium. And these three are what? These three are, are vowels. First, odd numbers in the descending order, followed by the words which are started with the vowels are arranged in the ascending order. Then, again, next one is what? Numbers. First, three numbers. Next, three words. Again, three numbers. Now, in these three numbers, what are the numbers here? Now, the numbers are? Now, first, odd numbers in the descending order and words with, which are started with the vowels in the ascending order. Next one in this one 58, it is not 664, it is just 64. 58, 64, 96, all these numbers are what? These numbers are even numbers in the ascending order. And finally, what are these numbers? Now the words, verdict, nature and kinetic and these words are started with consonants. Now the consonants in the descending order. Clear now? Hence first one, odd numbers odd numbers in descending order followed by words, words started with vowels, vowels in what? Ascending order. Next one, even numbers, even numbers in ascending order and finally words, words started with the consonants are in descending order, isn't it? Descending, ascending, ascending and descending and this is the final logic in this one. Then after finalizing the logic, then we should check out the pattern, isn't it? Or the method involved in this while arranging these elements. Now in order to identify the method involved in this one and which two should be compared here, input and step one should be compared. Now if you compare these two input and step one, tell me. Now first one, which words are being arranged here? Opium, 23, kinetic, amount, 64, nature, 71 and verdict, isn't it? Verdict and so on. Then what are the elements which are arranged first? No opium and next one 58. Opium is what? This opium is the word, the word, the highest vowel word, isn't it? Then, and this is what? This is even number, least even number. Then after this one, what happens here? This opium shifted to the second place in step two, 58 shifted to 11th place in step two. Again, that means this word shifted to the third place, shifted to the fourth place, shifted to the fifth place and shifted to the sixth place. 
and in further steps. And similarly here, this number 58, 58, 12th place, 11th place, 12th place, 11th place, next one is what? 12th place, 11th place, next one is 10th place and next is shifted to what? Next is shifted to 9th place and so on, isn't it? That means in further steps, this word shifted to the right hand side and this number shifted to the left hand side. And after this elderly, opium, next word is elderly, next amount, these three words. And next these numbers, what are the numbers here? Even numbers are arranged at the last place. And in the further steps, they will be shifted to the next place. And after this, then started with what? Started with odd numbers. Odd numbers, least odd number, next one 23, 71. Again, all these numbers will be shifted to the next place. And the words verdict and so on, verdict in nature and kinetic are arranged at the last place. Clear now? First, words started with vowels, next one even numbers and they will be shifted to left and right hand side respectively and followed by the odd numbers and the words started with the consonants and they again shifted to left hand side and right hand side. Done with this? Yes, can you work out these five questions? Now the logic and the method has been explained. Then question number 16 to 20. Now in this question number 16 to 20, Tell me what is information here, 16 to 20. How many persons are there? Seven friends, namely P, Q, R, S, T, U and V. U and V. Visit seven different countries, namely Japan, Germany, China, India, Nepal, Australia and Malaysia, not necessarily in the same order. Starting from Monday and ending on Sunday. Starting from Monday and ending on Sunday, isn't it? Now what are the elements given here? How many parameters? One is the person and the next one is the country they have visited, isn't it? Hence, now this is based on what? Week, Monday to Sunday is clearly given, hence fix the week at the center. Now this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and this is Sunday. Now again fix these weeks at the center and extend the lines like this by which we can solve two cases simultaneously if at all if there is a second possibility. Clear now? Now the first one is the person and the second one is the country they are visiting. Then R vis visits on Thursday. Thursday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday is R. Only two people between R and the one who visits Germany. Only two people between R and the one who visits Germany. Now in this one, R and Germany, how many possibilities for this one? Now only two people, this the person who visited Germany can be on Monday or what is the other possibility here? If R is here, then two persons between these two and the person on Germany can be at this place. Done with this one? Two persons between, only two people visit between R and the one who visits Germany. Hence as we have the second possibility, hence we have sorted the second possibility simultaneously. Next one, only four people visited between how many people? Four people visited between the one who visits Germany and we. Between Germany and we, how many persons should be there? There must be exactly four. Now in case one, this is one and this is case two. Now in case two, where should this we be? We visited on which day? Now four persons between Germany and we. One, two, three, four. Hence we must be on Saturday. Clear now? Then coming to the second case, between Germany and we, there must be exactly four. One, two, three, four. Hence we must be on Tuesday. And the one who visits Malaysia visits immediately before we. Immediately before we, Malaysia, hence in case number one, the person who visits Malaysia must be on Friday. And in case two, and immediately before we, Malaysia, hence this Malaysia, the person who visited Malaysia must be on Monday. Then only two people visit between the one who visits Malaysia and P. Between Malaysia and P, how many persons? There must be exactly two people. Two people between Malaysia and P, hence P must be on Tuesday in case one. And in case two, only two persons between Malaysia and P, hence P and R must be in the same place. Is it possible? Not possible. Hence the second case is completely ruled out. Now we are left with only one case. And S visits on one of the days after the one who visits Malaysia. S is on one of the days after Malaysia. Now in case one, now we are left with only one case. And the person who visits Malaysia is on Friday. S must be after this one, and S must be either on Saturday or Sunday. S could be either on Saturday and Sunday. Out of which Saturday is already filled by V, 
Hence, what is left over here? S must be on Sunday. Done with this one. S visits on one of the days after the one who visits Malaysia, and U visits immediately after the one who visits Japan. U is immediately after Japan. If Japan and U, these two persons must be adjacent to each other, and U is immediately after the person who visits Japan. Now, tell me where can this Japan be? Now, whether Japan can be on Tuesday? Yes, if Japan is on Tuesday, then you can be on Wednesday. There is a possibility. Hence, Japan and you can be on Tuesday and Wednesday. There is one possibility. Then tell me whether Japan can be on Wednesday. If Japan is on Wednesday, then you must be on what? You must be on. You must be on Thursday, which is not possible because R is already there. Hence, Japan cannot be here. Are you following or not? In this one, Japan can be on Tuesday, but yet Japan cannot be on Wednesday. Next one. And in the next case, can Japan be on Thursday? If Japan is on Thursday, then what happens here? You must be on Friday. That is a possibility, isn't it? And so Japan can be either on Tuesday or Thursday. And Japan cannot be in these two places, Saturday and Sunday, isn't it? Hence, what are the two possibilities here? Japan can be either on Tuesday or can be on Thursday. Then out of it. And you visit immediately after the one who visits Japan, and you does not visit Malaysia. As you does not visit Malaysia, and you cannot be on Friday. As you cannot be on Friday, and so Japan cannot be on Thursday. As Japan cannot be on Thursday, out of those between those two possibilities, one possibility is ruled out. Then Japan must be on Tuesday. If Japan is on Tuesday, then whatever this you, you must be immediately below this one, and so you must be on Wednesday. Done with this? Then only three people between the one. Who visits Japan and the one who visits Nepal? Now three persons between Japan and Nepal. Japan is on Tuesday. Three persons means one, two, three. And the person who visits Nepal must be on Saturday. Nepal. Only three persons between Japan and Nepal. The one who visits Australia, the next one. The one who visits Australia visits immediately before the one who visits China. Australia is immediately before the one who visits China. Now we should have. Two adjacent vacant places, isn't it? As there are two vac adjacent vacant places, where can we find these two adjacent vacant places? Wednesday and Thursday. Hence, Australia visits immediately before the one China, and the person who visits Australia must be on Wednesday, and China must be on Thursday. Clear? Australia and China. Then, Q does not visit on Monday. Q Monday is ruled out, hence Q must be on Friday. Then who is the person left over here? P Q R S T is the person left over. Hence T must be on Monday. And among the countries, Germany, Japan, Australia, China, Malaysia, Nepal, and which is left over? Finally, India. And the person who visits India is on Saturday and is by S. Done with this one. Now this is about question number sixteen to twenty. Now in this sixteen to twenty, sixteenth one, question number sixteen, as per the given arrangement. P is related to the one who visits Japan. P is related to the one who visits Japan in a certain way, and V is related to Nepal. That means P is Japan, V Nepal. That is definitely true, isn't it? In the same order, in the same way. To which of the following R related to? As R visited to which place? R visited to China. R visited to China. That is given in choice three. Next one, question number seventeen. Now in the seventeenth one, which of the following is true regarding T? Regarding T, which is true here? T visits immediately before P, definitely true or not? T visits immediately before P, definitely true. Choice one. Then question number eighteen. Now in the eighteenth one, four out of the following five. Four out of the following is nothing but an odd man out. Then T and U and Friday. U and Friday. Now how many persons are there in between U and Friday? There is exactly one. U is before Friday, that is Wednesday and Friday, and T and Tuesday, and T is on Monday and Tuesday. These two are adjacent to each other, and Q and Thursday, and Q and Thursday are adjacent to each other. Isn't it? Q is on Friday and Thursday, Friday Thursday, and next one S and Saturday, S Sunday and Saturday, S and Sunday, Sunday and Saturday adjacent to each other, and V V is on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. This is also adjacent. But as what about this one? Choice one. Now between choice one, what happens here? U and Friday, there is exactly one person, and in the remaining person, and in the remaining choices, the person and the day are conjugated to each other, adjacent to each other. 
Now this is about question number 18, next to 19th one. On which of the following days does you visit a country? As you visit on which day? You visit on Wednesday, that is choice one. Then question number 20. And who among the following visits India? Yes, who among the following visits India? S yes, visits India. S yes, that is choice five. Now this is about question numbers 20, 16 to 20. S yes, completed writing this. Then 21 to 25. Now in this question numbers 21 to 25. What is information give, given here? Now this is based on coding and decoding. Now in this coding and decoding, how many sentences are there? There are four sentences in total. Then let us start identifying the codes for each of these words. Now in the first sentence, there are four words, urban people prefer cars, and in the second one, profit for urban areas. And if you compare the first one and the second sentences, and what is the word which is common between these two? Urban. Urban people prefer cars and profit for urban areas. Urban is the only word which is common between these two. As urban is common between these two, what is the code common between these two? V E L M A B. A B is the code common. And the code to the word urban is A B. Isn't it? Then if you compare the first one and the third one. And people prefer cars. And people is the word which is common between the first one and the third one. Then as people is the word which is common between these two. And the code which is common between these two is V E. Hence, VE is the code common here, and the code for the word people is VE. And if you compare the first one and the fourth sentence, prefer and cars, here prefer and cars. Now, in none of the sentences, these two, okay, these words were not repeated anywhere, present anywhere. Hence, prefer and cars, and the codes for these two will be L, M, E, G in any order. L, M, E, G. Hence, for these two, we cannot able to identify the individual codes. Then compare the second and the third, profit for areas, and for is the word which is common between these two. As for is the word which is common between these two, and Jedi is the code which is common, and the code to the word for is Jedi, Jedi and Jedi. Next one, compare the second and the fourth, and profit and areas. Profit and areas, what is the word common here? Profit is the word common, and what is the code common here? N, P. And the code to the word profit is NP. Hence, profit NP, here also profit NP. Then in the second word, on second sentence, only one word, areas is left over. And what is the code left over here? And the code left over is SU. Hence, areas SU. Then compare the third and the fourth. Demand and hike. And what is the word which is common here? Hike is the word which is common. As hike is the word which is common. And which code is common here? CD. And the code to the word hike is CD. For high key CD, then demand. Now the second third statement. Demand is left over and the code QR. And the code to the word demand is QR. And finally, now in this one, in and margin are the two words left over. But whereas in the remaining sentences, now now these two words are given, are present. And the codes for these two cannot be identified. And they are Excel and JN in any order. Done with this, Excel, J. Then in the given code language, if small is coded as W, Y. Small is coded as what? Small is W, Y. If small is coded as W, Y. And a prefer and cars. And a prefer and cars, L, M, E, G in any order. L, M and E, G in any order. Hence, what is your answer? L, M, W, Y, E, G or E, G, W, Y, L, M. Choice three, E G W Y L M. Choice three, and this is a very basic reason. Okay, can be coded as. Now the code for small is given, and choice three. Then question number twenty-two. Now in this one, what is the code for the word areas? As what is the code here? S U. S C is the code for areas. That is choice four. Then question number twenty-three. What does the code J N stands for? Now this J N stands for what? Very J N. The code for JN could be either in or margin. In or margin, so I3. The code for this one will be either in or margin. Then question number 24. Now 24, what will be the possible code for urban food demand? Urban food demand, urban food demand. Now in this one, demand is what? Demand is QR, urban and food. What is the code for urban here? Urban is AB. 
and what is the code for food here? Now, if you observe here, food is nowhere present in any of the given statements. As food is not present here, hence, and that is the reason why the question is about a possible code because we are not 100% sure what the code for this could be, isn't it? Hence, but whereas A, B, and Q R, if you observe here, A, B, Q R is here, and A, B, Q R, Q R and A, B is present in choice four as well. Now, either choice two can be your answer or choice four can be your answer. Now, between these two. In choice two, what is the code left over here? MJ. Now tell me whether MJ could be the code for food or not. MJ. Yes, it can be the code because it is nowhere. MJ is nowhere present in the given codes. Hence, it could be the code for food. And coming to choice four, and QR, AB, and CD is there. Now tell me whether CD can be the code for food. No. Why? Because we are hundred percent sure that now the code for high key CD. Hence, this CD cannot be the code for food. Hence, the choice four is ruled out. Hence, the choice two could be the answer, isn't it? Hence, it is a possible code. Hence, question number twenty-five. Next one. What will be the code for a hike? Yes, tell me what is the code for a hike? The code for a hike is CD, and it is other than those given as options. That is none of the choice four. Now, this is about question numbers twenty-one to twenty-five. Then. Twenty-six to thirty. Now, in this question numbers twenty-six to thirty, how many persons are there? Eight friends, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, and W are seated around a square table in such a way that, and these persons were seated around a square table. Now, this is the square table. Four persons, and the remaining four persons, four persons seated at the corners. And four of them sit at four corners, while four sit in the middle of each of the four sides. And the ones who sit at the four corners facing the center. Now the persons who are seated at the corners are facing the center, isn't it? And the persons who are facing at the middle are seated away from the center. Now these persons are sitting away from the center. Clear now? Then, now we sit a second to the right of four. Now in these type of questions, first we should always sit for. Whether any information given about any person is facing the center or away from the center, or seated at the corner or seated at the center. Now in this one, V sits second to the right of R. R sits in the middle of one of the sides. Clearly given. As R sits at one of the middle of any sides, among these four middle sides, we can fix R at any place. Now I am fixing R at this place, and V sits second to the right of R. As R is facing away, and V sits second to the right of R, V will be here. V sits second to the right of R. R sits at middle of one of the sides of the table. Two people between V and Q. As two people between V and Q, one, two, Q can be here. That is one possibility, and that is right hand side of V is Q. And what is the second possibility? Now the second possibility, left hand side of V can be Q, isn't it? Now, as there is a second possibility, we are drawing the second possibility as well. Clear? Now these persons are seated away. R is here. And V is here, and two persons between V and Q, Q can be here. Are you following or not? Now V sits a second to the right of R. R sits in the middle of one of the sides, sides of the table. Only two people sit between V and Q. Two people sit between V and Q. S is one of the immediate neighbors of Q. As S is one of the immediate neighbors of Q. Now this is case one. In case one, S can be either here or here. Hence, in case one, there are two possibilities for this S. And in case two, what happens here? In case two, there is only one possibility, isn't it? And R sits in middle of the cells. Only two people. S is one of the immediate neighbors of Q. T sits second to the left of S. As T is seated second to the left of S, T is seated second to the left of S. Now earlier we had discussed about S can be either here or here. Out of which, if S is at this place, let us assume that S is at this place. If S is here, then this S is facing away. And T sits second to the left of S. As T sits second to the left of S, then V and T must be at the same place. Is it possible? It is not possible to have V and T at the same place. Hence, T cannot be at this place. As T cannot be here, S cannot be here. Are you following or not? If you take S at this place, then T sits second to the left of S is not valid. And says S cannot be here. Then where should this S be? Because these persons are facing away. Then S will be here. If S is here, then second to the left hand side T will be here. Done with this? Then in this case, 
and P sits a second to the left of S. And P sits a second to the left of U. And P is seated second to the left of U. As P sits a second to the left of U, and this P and U must be at what? P and U must be at the corners only, isn't it? And V is not an immediate neighbor of U is there. As V is not an immediate neighbor of U, U cannot be here and U cannot be here. As U cannot be in these two places, U must be here. If U is here, then whatever this one, P sits a second to the left of U, hence P must be here. Are you following or not? Then P sits a second to the left of U is valid. P will be here. If P is here, then who is the person left over? P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W will be here. Then coming to this one, then who is the person here? U. And U is, V is not an immediate neighbor of U. U cannot be at this place, U cannot be at this place in case 2. Hence U must be here. If U is here, then P must be here, isn't it? Because U and P, there must be exactly one person. Then P sits a second to the left of U. Now this U is facing towards the center, then P will be at this place. Then P is seated second to the left or second to the right? Yes. Second to the right. But as the condition is second to the left, hence the second case is completely invalid. Now till the last statement, both the conditions are what? Both the conditions are valid. Hence we cannot directly start with a single possibility. Because if you have started with this possibility, then what happens here at the final statement and this will be invalid. Again, you should start the next possibility. And so rather than working out two way, two times and always start these two simultaneously. Done with this? Now this is the final arrangement. Then question number 26. Again, four out of the following five. As four out of the following five is nothing but an odd minute. Now in this one Q, R, T, V and S. Now Q is at the corner, R, center, T, center, V and S are the center. R, T, V and S are these four persons seated at the centers of the table and this Q is seated at the corner. Hence choice one. Except Q, the remaining persons are at the centers. Then who sits a second to the left of W? As tell me who is seated second to the left of W? W is at this place, this person is facing towards the center and second to the left of is Q, choice 4. Then question number 28. Now in this 28, which of the following is true regarding P? Now W sits a second to the left of P, true or false? W seated second to the left of P is definitely true, choice 1. Then question number 29. Now in this 29, how many people sit between R and T when counted from the right of R? R and T when counted from the right of R, left of R does not matter here. Why? Because R and T are opposite to each other and so only three people. Three people that is choice two. Then question number 30. Now in this one, what is the position of V? What is the position of P with respect to Q? What is the position of V with respect to Q? V is here and Q is here. Position of V with respect to Q and V is thought to the right. And thought to the right choice, thought to the right. And where is given here? third to the left and fifth to the left and what is the position of V with respect to Q? 1, 2, 3, third to the right or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth to the left. And it's between these two, what is given here? Fifth to the left is given. Hence, the choice 5 is the answer. Done with this? Now, this is about question numbers 26 to 30. Then, question numbers 31 to 35. Now, question numbers 31 to 35, these questions come under which category? 31 to 35 syllogisms, isn't it? Then, question numbers 31 to 35. Now, in this 31st, some outputs are result. Some of the outputs are results can be written like this. These are outputs and these are results. Some outputs are result. All outputs are products. All these outputs are what? All outputs are products. And all products are ills. All products are what? All these products are ills. Now this is a basic diagram and again if you observe here all the statements are affirmative statements, isn't it? As affirmative statements are there, hence as all the statements are affirmative, negative conclusion cannot be drawn. Then first one, what is the first conclusion here? All outputs are ills, definitely true. And next one is a possibility, all results are ills is a possible. All results are ills, possible or not? Now as all the statements are affirmative in the case of possibility, take it as a single diagram. That is yield equals to 
yield equals to product equals to result equals to and output as all these four can be equal then what is your answer that all results are yields is a possibility then what is your answer here both one and two both one and two and it is given in choice three question number 31 choice three. then question number 32 all crops are products all these crops are what all crops are projects all crops are projects and some projects are missions some of the projects are missions and no mission is a guide no mission is a guide then first one some projects are guides some projects are guides is possible because project is here guide is here no intersection between these two and the second one no project is a guide is definitely true no project is a guide isn't it no project is here guide is here then what happened to this one now the second conclusion is true and the second one is what it is a negative conclusion as the negative conclusion follows from the basic diagram then we should draw an alternate diagram by proving its complementary pair and what is a complementary pair to no project is guide some projects are guide now tell me whether i can prove some projects are guides or not rather than drawing my guide at this place now i am drawing my guide like this tell me whether i can draw a guide like this or not if you draw the guide like this then what are the statements all crafts are projects is true and some projects are missions is true and again no mission is a guide now guide is here mission is here now also there is no intersection between mission and guide and so all the three statements are valid and so what happened to this one no project is a guide has become false because i have proven a case wherein some of the projects are guides and so alternate diagram proven previous conclusion will be false after making the previous conclusion false then what should we do then we should check out the affirmative conclusion which was false earlier in the basic diagram now the first affirmative conclusion was false now some projects are guides now tell me what happened to this some projects are guides now you put japan you put true in the some projects are guides some projects are guides now it has become true hence what is your answer here in the basic diagram first conclusion false second is true as the second is a negative conclusion to make this one false now we have proven the first one hence between these two the first one is false second will be true the second is false first will be true between these two only one must happen hence either the first one or the second one either one or two choice four done with this now this is about question number 32 choice four then 33 now in this 33 some outputs are result some of the outputs are results can be written like this output and result these are outputs and these are results the next one all outputs are projects all these outputs are what projects and next one all outputs are product and all products are ills all products are ills and again first one no project is a result as of now no project is a result true or false this is result and this is project hence that one is false and next one all ills are product all ills are, all products are ills is true all ills are product is false hence neither one not two neither one not two choice five Question number 33, choice 5. Then 34. Now in this question number 34, all crafts are products. All these crafts are what? All crafts are projects. And next one. Some projects are missions. Some of the projects are missions. And no mission is a guide. No mission is a guide. This is the diagram. Then first one. No guide is a craft. No guide is a craft is true. And some missions are craft. Some missions are craft. And mission is here, craft is here, that is false. Then first one has no guide is a craft is true. To make this one false, now I should prove some guides are craft. Some guides are craft, then we should draw guide like. Now tell me whether I can draw like that or not. Isn't it? No guide is craft. Yes, we can definitely prove because guide and mission should not be intersected. Now also I am not intersecting these two. And so what happened to this one? Alternate diagram proven, previous conclusion will be false. After making the previous conclusion false, now we should check out for the second one. Because the conclusion which was false earlier. And what was that conclusion? Some missions are craft. Now tell me whether they have become true now? No. Now also they were false. And so what is your answer here? Neither one not. Neither one not two. It is choice five. Question number 34, choice five. Then question number 35 is 35. Now in this question number 35, no price is rate, no price is rate, no intersection between price and rate, no price is rate and all rates are expenses. No price is rate and all rates are expenses and first one, no expense is a price. No expense is a price is true or not? 
now is here that is definitely true because now these are expenses and these are prices and second one is what second one is a possibility first we should finalize the definite conclusions then only we should come for possible conclusions then first one what no expense is a price it is a negative conclusion to make this one false now by should prove some expenses are price now tell me whether i can prove like that or not some expenses are price now said so no price is a rate price and rate should not be intersected isn't it but wait tell me whether i can draw my expenses like this or not yes i can't withdraw like this cheppan enduku draw cheyalam thala addanga tipputunnaru mere cheppan enduku draw cheyalam statement no price is rate ippudu kuda no price is rate saripindi kada no price is rate now also no price is rate no price then what is this next one all rates are expense ippudu kuda saripindi kada all rates are expense all rates are expenses ila undi no price is ee rendu itlu kelu ippudu em ayipindi statements valid ayya ledha no price is rate price ikkada rate ikkada ee rendu color ledha no price is rate second one all rates are expenses ee rates are name ayipindi all rates are expenses is also true hence while drawing that basic diagram which two elements should not be intersected anedi chaala clear ga raskovali expenses tho ee line kalavakoda lekapothe rates tho kalavakoda rates tho kalavadu anduku price ki rate ki madhyana lo maatrame line undu ee expenses tho manaku link ayyadi ee expenses ela aina manaku undu isn't it and so what happened is one alternate diagram proven or not proven alternate diagram proven previous conclusion will be false then coming to the second one what is the second one here and the second one is all prices are expenses is possible tell me all prices are expenses is possible or not prices are any expenses of what chance not ela jepto japani ee price ni lo tesam now this will be my price now it is possible or not now also i am not intersecting this price and rate and the second one is false and so what is your answer here only conclusion 2 only conclusion 2 that is choice 4 done with this now this is about question number 31 to 35 and syllogisms and next to this one 31 to 35 36 to 40 now in this 36 to 40 what are the elements here inequalities now first one l and u now if you observe here both the conclusions are in between l and u only then identify the relation between l and u what is the element which is common here b is the letter which is common b to l and b to u now b to l what is the relation here b greater than or equals to l and and b and u what is the relation here b lesser than or equals to u as b lesser than or equals to u u greater than or equals to b u greater than or equals to b b greater than or equals to l now the relation between u and l what is the relation here u is either greater or equals to l that means l is either lesser than or equals to u either it can be lesser than or it can be equals to hence either 1 or 2 that is given in choice 5 Hence, question number thirty-six, choice five is the answer, either one or two. Then coming to question number thirty-seven. Now in this thirty-seven, the relation between x and k. Now the relation between x and k. Now if you observe here, the relation between x and k. As what is your answer here? The relation between x and k. W to x and x to k. Isn't it? W is the element which is common. But as W to x, there is one opposite one. there are the symbols are opposite to each other one greater than and another one is lesser than two opposite symbols hence there is no relation between x and k then coming to the second one l and w l and w what is element which is common here c is common and w greater than or equals to c w greater than or equals to c greater than or equals to l then what is your answer here w greater than or equals to l is true which implies that l is lesser than or equals to w is true and so only conclusion two follows that is choice two 37 choice 2 then coming to 38 now in this 38 the relation between r and j now the relation between r and j r is here j is here the letter which is common between these two is u is common isn't it now u lesser than or equals to r and in this one and u lesser than or equals to j a u lesser than or equals to j j is greater than or equals to u j greater than or equals to u u lesser than or equals to r hence what happened to this one greater than lesser than two opposite symbols no relation between r and j then coming to the second one the relation between l and k now what is the relation between l and k k greater than or equals to u and l lesser than u means u greater than l now the relation between k and l what is the relation between k and l k greater than l l lesser than k is definitely true and so only conclusion 2 follows only conclusion 2 that is choice 4 38 choice 4 
done with this then question number 39 now in this question number 39 again the conclusions are in between d and l only hence find out the relation between d and l now between d and l what is the letter which is common c is common d greater than c c greater than or equals to l d greater than c greater than or equals to l now between d and l which symbol is common greater than hence d greater than l is definitely true and d equals to l is false and so what is your answer here only conclusion one and it is given in choice four and 39 choice four is the answer then finally question number 40 now in this 40 the relation between s and r r is here s is here and what is the element which is common between these two now r and s m is common r less than m m less than r equals to s r less than m less than r equals to s hence r less than s is definitely true if r less than s is true s greater than r is also true and so what is your answer first one definitely true then coming to the second one the relation between y and s now the relation between y and s and again which element is common here m is common m greater than or equals to y and m is less than or equals to s means s greater than or equals to m s greater than or equals to m m greater than or equals to m y and so what is the final answer here s is greater than or equals to y which implies that y is less than or equals to s is also true hence both the conclusions follow both one and two both one and two and it is given which one choice two is done now this is about question number 40 choice two. done with this one question numbers 1 to 40 in this 20581 paper the next anything else left over here number series question numbers please in this number series 50 51 as question numbers 51 onwards next number series question numbers 51 to 55 now in this 51 to 55 as tell me question number 51 now in this question number 51 now the numbers are increasing at a very smaller rate hence it must be under difference then tell me what is the difference between these numbers 24 26 20 32 12 as what is the next one to this 24 and 26 what is the difference here plus 2 is the difference next one 26 and 24 26 24 as what is the difference between these two now the difference between these two is minus and 26 minus 6 next one 20 and 32 here the difference is so much plus 12 and 32 and 12 the difference is so much 20 and the next one should be how much now 2 6 and 12 20 yes, so how to represent this one 2 6 12 20 now this 2 can be written as 1 into 2 and 6 can be written as 2 into 3 12 can be written as 3 into 4 and 20 can be written as 4 into 5 next one 5 into 6 5 into 6 is how much 30 now this 30 should be added or subtracted added and 12 plus 30 42 42 isn't it or else this 2 6 12 20 can also be written as this is 1 square plus 1 6 can be written as 2 square plus 2 and 12 can be written as 3 square plus 3 and 20 can be written as 4 square plus 4 and the next one must be 5 square plus 5 should be added what is 5 square plus 5 it is 30 or else 1 into 2 2 into 3 3 into 4 4 into 5 5 into 6 done with this then question number 52 now in this question number 52 6 4 5 11 1 89 as tell me what is the answer here 6 4 5 11 blank 189 now if you are there here the number suddenly increases from 11 to 189 isn't it as the number suddenly increases it must be either product or combination out of which 6 and 4 cannot be related in the product hence it must be combination and so how to represent this 6 and 4 again if you are there here now only one number is decreased as whenever only one number is decreased always opt for what either 0.5 or into 1 isn't it now 6 and 4 how to represent this one 6 and 4 now 6 into 1 6 minus 2 and 4 and 5 as tell me how to represent 4 into 2 is 8 minus 3 is 5 and 5 1 2 3 5 into 3 15 minus 4 is 11 now check out this multiplications into 1 into 2 into 3 next one is into 4 next one must be into 5 and check out this one minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 and next to minus 6 now 11 into 4 44 44 minus 5 
39. Now 39 into 5 minus 6 is how much? 195 minus 6, 189. And so what is the missing number here? 39 choice. Now the given numbers are multiplied with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are subtracted. Into 1 minus 2, into 2 minus 3, into 3 minus 4, into 4 minus 5 and into 5 minus 6. Then, and this is about 52. Then question number 53, 19, 10, 11, 18, 38. Let's tell me the answer. 19, 10, 11, 18, 38. Now here, it must be under which category? Yes? 19 and this one. 19 and 10, 10 and 11, 11 and 18, and 18 and 38. Now again, 19 and 10, how can you express this one, 19 and 10? Now here once it is decreased and from there onwards it started increasing, isn't it? Hence whenever the number decreased once, hence go for what? Go for 0 0.5. 19 into 0.5 is how much? 9.5 plus 0.5 will be how much? 10, isn't it? 19 into 0.5 is 9.5, 9.5 plus 0.5 that is 10. And 10 and 11, 10 into 1 is 10 plus 1 is 11. Next one, 11 and 18, 11 into 1.5. Yes, tell me how, what is 11 into 1.5? 11 plus 5.5, 16.5 plus 1.5, that will be 18. And next one must be 18 into 2 plus 2, 36 plus 2, 38. And the next one must be how much? Into 2.5 plus 2.5. Yes, 38 into 2.5, 38 into 2, 76 plus 19. 76 plus 19 is how much? 95, 90, 76 plus 19, 95, 95 plus 2.5, 97.5, 97.5, that is choice 5. Now the given numbers are multiplied with 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, 0 0.511, 0 0.5, 2, 2.5, and 0 0.511, 2, 2.5 are being added. And this is about question number 53. Then question number 54. Now 54, if you have here, the numbers are in the decreasing order. Whenever the numbers are in the decreasing order, always start in the reverse order, isn't it? 6, 21, and 66, and 201, and 606. Because whenever the numbers are in the decreasing order, the logic could be either subtraction or division. And between addition and subtraction, it is always better or comfortable for us to work out addition. And between multiplication and division, multiplication is always comfortable. Hence, whenever the numbers are in the decreasing order, start in the reverse order. Then 6, 21, 66, 201, 606. Now the numbers are increasing at a very fast rate. From 66, 201, again 201 to 600. As the numbers are increasing at a very fast rate, it must be under from multiplication or combination. But 6 and 21 cannot be related in the multiplication, hence it must be combination. Now we have finalized the model. And again in the combination, we have discussed about where to start always start at the highest numbers because the logic would be only one possibility will be there in between. Now 2 not 1 into how much? 3. 2 not 1 into 3, 6 not 3 plus 3 is 6 not 6. Here 66 and 2 not 1. 66 into 3 is how much? 198 plus 3 is 2 not 1. And 21 into 66, 21 into 3, 63 plus 3 is 66. Now 6 into 3, 18 plus 3, 21. Then what should the next one here? Into 3 plus 3 must be 6. Hence, so what will be your answer here? 1. Now, 1 into 3 is 3, plus 3 is 6. Then, what is the missing number here? 1. Choice 5. Choice 4. Question number 54, choice 4. Then, coming to 55. 18, 19, 24. Now, here 18, 19, 24. Here, the numbers are increasing at a very, very smaller rate. Hence, it must be under difference only. Now first, as soon as you see the question, first identify, identify under which model these questions will appear, isn't it? Where it comes under difference, product or combination. Then here the numbers are increasing at a very smaller rate, it must be under difference. Now here what is the difference between 18 and 19? Plus 1. 19 and 24? Plus 5. And 24 and 37, what is the difference here? 24 plus how much? Plus 13. And 37 and 66, what is the difference? 37 and 66. 29. Then how to relate these numbers? 1, 5, 13. 13 and 29, 13 into 2, 26 plus 3, 29. Isn't it? Now, again, 5 into 2, 10 plus 3, 13. 1 into 2, 2 plus 3, 13. Next one, 29 into 2 plus 3. 29 into 2 plus 3. 29 into 2 is how much? 58 plus 3, 61. Now, how much should be added here? 61. 
now 66 plus 61, 6 plus 7, 6 plus 6, 127, 127 choice. And you can again take the difference of difference also you will get the answer. Because the numbers are increasing at a okay, specific pattern, difference of difference will also hold good. And those things upon difference 4, 8, next one 16, 32, 4, 8, 16, 32. 4 into 8, 4 into 2, 8, 8 into 2, 16, 16 into 2, 32 and so on. Done with this? Now this is about paper number 20581, question numbers 51 to 55.